Hi, my name is Asya Wadud, and I'm so happy to be here today to share a couple of poems with you. And um, I'm a writer, I'm a poet and an essayist, and I teach, um, I teach children. And actually I teach people of all ages, but mostly work with children. I teach at a school called St. Anne's School in Brooklyn, and I also teach in the MFA program at Columbia University. And um, I wanted to share today uh, a poem, or at least an excerpt of Inger Christensen's Alphabet, which was translated by Susanna Nide. And this is a book that I have come to over and over again in the past few years, and I keep returning to it for many, many, many different reasons. And I feel that it's this kind of um, this kind of beacon and this kind of this kind of incantatory way that it opens up and kind of folds and and kind of folds in on itself and then opens back up. It has so much to offer every single time that I come to it. So I'm just going to start from the beginning, and I'll just say, in case you're not familiar with this work, um, so it's by um, a Danish poet named Inger Christensen, and the work is based on the mathematical principle of the Fibonacci sequence. And so Fibonacci sequence is basically, it's a mathematical equation by which the every new sum is the sum of its two previous parts. So for example, one plus one equals two, two plus three equals five, five plus three equals eight, and then so on and so on and so on. So the poem takes that as its point of, its point of departure. And you can kind of, even though you can't see it, I'm reading it, but you can hear it in the way that that the poem is structured. So that's one piece of the poem. The other piece of the poem is that it's also this alphabetical sequence. So you'll start to see it. And I think Susanna Knight has been as faithful or as, as, as much as she could to the translation. And um, it's originally written in Danish and in the English translation, you can al also hear the alphabetic sequence. So alphabetical sequence. So um, I'm just gonna start from the beginning and I'm just gonna read for um, about five minutes or so, and and then I'm going to read a poem after that. It's kind of written in conversation with Inger Christensen's work. So, Alphabet by Inger Christensen. Apricot trees exist. Apricot trees exist. Bracken exists, and blackberries, blackberries. Bromine exists, and hydrogen, hydrogen. Cicadas exist, chicory, chromium, citrus trees. Cicadas exist, cicadas, cedars, cypresses, the cerebellum. Doves exist, dreamers and dolls. Killers exist, and doves and doves. Haze, dioxin, and days. Days exist, days and death, and poems exist. Poems, days, death. Early fall exists, aftertaste, afterthought. Seclusion and angels exist. Widows and elk exist. Every detail exists. Memory, memory's light. Afterglow exists. Oaks, elms, junipers, sameness. Loneliness exists. Eider ducks, spiders, and vinegar exist. And the future, the future. Fisherbird herons exist with their gray blue arcing backs, with their black feathered crests and their bright feathered tails, they exist. In colonies, they exist in the so-called old world. Fish too exist in osprey, ptarmigans, falcons, sweetgrass, and the fleeces of sheep. Fig trees and the products of vision exist. Errors exist, instrumental, systemic, random remote control exists, and birds and fruit trees exist. Fruit there in the orchard where apricot trees exist, apricot trees exist, and countries whose warmth will call forth the exact color of apricots in the flesh. Given limits exist, streets oblivion, and grass and gourds and goats and gorse, eagerness exists. Given limits, branches exist, Wind lifting them exists, and the lone drawing made by the branches of the tree called an oak tree exists, and the tree called an ash tree, a birch tree, a cedar tree, the drawing repeated in the gravel path weeping exists as well. 
fireweed and mugwort hostages, hostages, gray lag geese, gray lags and their young, and guns exist, an enigmatic backyard, overgrown, sear, gemmed, just with red currants. Guns exist in the midst of the lit up chemical ghetto. Guns exist with their old fashioned, peaceable precision. Guns and wailing women full of greedy, greedy owls exist. The scene of the crime exists. The scene of the crime, drowsy, normal, abstract, bathed in the whitewash, God forsaken light, this poisonous white crumbling poem. Whispering exists, whispering exists, harvest, history, and Halley's, Haley's Comet exists. Hosts exist, hordes, high commanders, hollows, and within the hollows have shadows. Within the half shadows, occasional hairs, occasional hanging leaves, shading the hollow where bracken exists and blackberries, blackberries, occasional hairs hidden under the leaves. And gardens exist, horticulture and elder trees, pale flowers still as a seething hymn. And half moon exists, half silk in the whole heliocentric haze that has dreamed these devoted brains, their luck and human skin. Human skin and houses, houses exist where Hades rehousing the horse and the dog in the shadows of glory, hope, and the river of vengeance. Hail under the stone skies exists, the hydrangeas white, bright shining, blue or greenish, fogs of sleep, occasionally pink, a few sterile, sterile patches exist, and beneath the angled Armageddon of the arch, arching heavens, poison and poisons helicopters. Humming harps above the henbane, shepherd's purse and flax, henbane, shepherd's purse and flax. This last hermetic writing, written otherwise only by children, and wheat, wheat and wheat fields exist. The head spinning horizontal knowledge of wheat fields, half lives, famine, and honey, and deepest in the heart, otherwise as ever, only deepest in the heart, the roots of the hazel and the hazel that stands on the hill slope of the heart, tough and hardy, an accumulated weekday of angelic orders, high speed, high ascent in its decay, life on earth as it is in heaven. So I'll pause there. I love this poem so much. It's so, it has such an incantatory quality to it. And it just continues on and on in this way, recalling previous moments of the piece. And like I said, it kind of folds in on itself. And the beautiful and the profane and the sacred are just kind of all existing all together like that. So alphabet, and then I have this poem that um, that I wrote is called L, and it's kind of written in conversation with with alphabet from Ingrid Christensen, and then also this piece from the writer Claire Womanholm, um, who has a poem called O which I also return to often. So there's this kind of theme of al alphabet. So I'll read this piece, it's called L. L after O by Claire Womanholm. Long live our loyalty, how it loops, falls, lumbers, lulls, and lists, finally resisting its own limpness. Long live anything that has long wished to live, the lasso, the lake, the limit, the left lane, the spices spinning on their lazy Susan, the lavender field at peak bloom, illustrious and oven hot, land and the outliers, land and the legion of the outer banks, land and the landed, latitude and that was my limit until I looked left, what length we expect to cover in these longitudinal years, early loops sliced lengthwise to see their insides. The latent exercise of the loom, left to right, layered weft and warp, listening to its language, leached all across the living room. An antecedent to loyalty is drift, drift or look away from the limit. Let me look at the warped shapes inside the lava, angry loaves lifting the mouth of the mountain, then lifting clear off the mountain. Leaven load loaves at the limit of their leavening, left loaves rock hard obsidian thoughts make. My yearling, even luxury has its limits, having lived or existed all year long. Love is a lifetime of long live our loyalty, how it loops, falls, lumbers, lulls, and lists, finally resisting its own limpness. A lifeline or ulna, all my limber bones held in my left hand. I place the bones on a bay laurel wreath, 
placed the wreath inside a barrel, lined up the barrel alongside other barrels laden with laurels and ulnas. What to say of lavishing honor? What to say of laconic I once tried? What of leisure or lassitude? Lateral pines loosen at the ends of their branches, languishing before they fall, loop through the extra air. I am alone in the lake region, algae bloom at my ankles, loaves lifting the mountain to make fresh archipelagos. Thank you.